So you might have read the title and thought, yo, why are you over exaggerating? Like, I'm not over exaggerating actually. This is actually like, it changed my life. No BS, no clickbait, it's actually changing my life. So this video is all about meditation and how it changed my life pretty much. You probably heard the term before at some point. You, you know, monks do it, yogis do it, uh, hippies do it. But I doubt most of us know the essence of why it is so powerful. In this video, I'm gonna share with y'all why I do it and how if you do it, you'll see drastic changes in your life long term. <laughs> All right, enjoy the video. Gotta keep your head up, oh, and you can let your head down. Alright, so welcome back to the channel. Make sure you subscribe because in every single video, I aim to not only entertain you, but to also educate you. Um, the best of both worlds, pretty much, right? So in every topic, the underlying theme is you only get you not only get educated, but you also get entertained with, you know, just me, some funny clips, and all that good stuff. You know I mean? <laughs> so, what is meditation? Uh, meditation is essentially being entirely being consciously present in the current moment that you're in it involves focusing on your breath focusing on the sounds around you and even at certain points allowing your mind to wander from one thing to the next it's all incorporated into your whole meditation practice and this is often done with your eyes closed and being in complete stillness. So what are the benefits pretty much, right? It transformed my ability to focus on a certain task, like a specific task, right? Cause like, even think about it when you try to study, right? You're constantly getting, you, people get distracted often when they're trying to study for an exam for a test. Our brain is not wired to pay attention to more than one complex task at a time. What we're actually doing when we think we're multitasking is quickly shifting our focus from one activity to another. So while our mind is engaged in applying makeup, arguing with backseat drivers, fumbling for a water bottle, or a conversation, mm -hmm. it's blind. And let's, and let's not even use the study example. When you're watching a movie, you feel the innate like desire to check your phone as well. We can't just sit, I, I noticed this myself as well, I, can't, I used to not be able to just sit down, do one task, and focus on it to its completion. Like when you watch a show, you don't you, when you watch a show even, you check your phone time time as well. So you don't just be present be present in watching the show in its entirety without checking other stuff. So we often want to multitask. And this is what meditation prevents from doing. Because you're focusing on one thing for X amount of minutes, one minute, ten minutes, whatever. You're focusing on one thing, doing this and being present in that act pretty much. So we're not even throughout the whole day, whole day, like we're constantly consumed with our thoughts. Rarely are we ever just still, we keep jittering from one thing to the next. Even to stand in line to get groceries, we can't just stand in line and just be, just enjoy the boredom. We have to check our phone, we have to listen to music, we have to do everything. Constant stimulation is what makes you addicted to your phone pretty much. If every time you feel bored, you dispel it by giving yourself some novel stimuli from your phone or computer screen, your brain starts to develop a Pavlovian connection. Boredom means stimuli. If you have that Pavlovian connection built up, when it comes time to do serious cognitive work, to do real deep work, that type of work is by definition boring because there's not a lot of novel stimuli you're focused on one thing. If your brain has been taught, I always get stimuli when I'm bored, it's not gonna tolerate deep work when the time comes. And so what I advise people is not that you have to spend your entire life bored, or that there's something good intrinsically in being bored. What I say is you have to have regular practice with being bored and just being okay being bored. If you do that a few times each day, what you're doing is you're breaking your brain's understanding that boredom always means stimuli. And so I say, go do some errands without your phone. You know, I mean, do some stuff. Stand in line at the bank and be in line at the bank. Stand in line at the supermarket and just be in line and be a little bit bored. It's not going to kill you. But what you're getting is this bigger advantage of teaching your brain. Sometimes we get stimuli, sometimes we don't. And it keeps it comfortable with both. And that's what I know as myself. And that's why I had to find a different way and stumble upon meditation. It was initially introduced to me by um, Sean Stevenson. He's the author of The Model Health Show. So it's all about health related stuff. And it's, it was, meditation was ex extremely 
important in adding it to my morning routine. There, this is from the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta found that meditation lowered blood pressure and reduced the risk of heart disease and stroke. And numerous studies also demonstrate that meditation can reduce chronic pain and associated inflammatory biomarkers. You can eat, you can eat it in the morning or eating pretty much, right? So not only are we consumed with our environment, but we're constantly dwelling on the past. That past exam, that past shorty that played you, or used you, or that F boy that used you for his own personal gain, wasn't really about you. You're constantly focused on past situations and you're forgetting about that you're actually living in the present moment. Even when you're in the lecture hall or, whatever, or your teacher, you're thinking about what to eat next, thinking about, um, you know, that cute guy, cute girl. You're not focused necessarily, not obviously, once in a while, yeah, it's all good to focus on and think about, but like constantly being distracted by the next thing when you're doing something else, that's how you are, you lose yourself in the way of the world pretty much. And definitely, Social media has been a big factor uh, with all the benefits that it does. I, as, a, as in anything, there are many drawbacks. Social media definitely is more distracted and constantly breaking our focus from doing certain tasks. And it and this makes sense because these companies, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all these other stuff, they design the apps in a way that it makes you stay on the, stay on the app as long as possible. So. You're, only, you're making them money, but what about you? <laughs> it's not allowing you to function optimally as a human being, right? You don't let things use you. You use things to your advantage. So that's why even for me, like, I don't check social media for the first, like, two, three hours of my day. I don't check it at all. Like, it's not a thing. Because, like, once you, once you scroll down one picture or go through the explore page or... Twitter trends, whatever, you could be on there for like the next 30, 40 minutes and boom, time is gone, ticking. Look, it's already September, bro, it's already September. Look how the year just walked, just came by. September 2018. And like you, I'm, I, was, I used to say, oh, I don't have time. But think about it, that whole 24 hours, you can't even think about one minute to meditate. You can't meditate, meditate for 20 minutes, you can't meditate for 10 minutes. You can't take one minute to just be present. One minute, just pause everything and think. Just, just chill. Chill for one minute. Without the kids, without mom and dad, without social media. Just one moment to be present in yourself without any extra stimulation. That's when you know you're on BS. Because you do have one minute. As in anything, once you make it a priority, you make time for it. You make time for the things you want, right? People make time for the things they actually want. When anybody says, I don't have time for this, always ask them, it's because they don't make time for it. It's not important enough to them to make time for it. And I came to learn that it's not, it's not, it's not necessarily thinking about thoughts as bad or good, just recognizing and acknowledging your, moment, your emotions. I acknowledge, I, f I feel sad, I acknowledge I'm stressed by the exam, but that doesn't define me. I'm, I'm more than my current situation. I acknowledge like how I'm feeling. Like, you don't take the, the moment to acknowledge how you feel yourself, right? You're constantly um, trying to avoid the emotion sometimes without being present in it. So it's not, so meditation essentially is not about, like as I've, as I've learned for myself, it's not about forcing yourself to change or shift about something. But it's, just, it's just about acknowledging the emotion and not acknowledging the thought and knowing that they're there. And even with all the stimulation around the world, if you can master your own stimu your own like mental focus, own like thoughts, you can master anything pretty much. He who masters himself masters all. <laughs> when you're able to master your, your social media usage, you're able to master how much TV you, you use, you're able to master like your, 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 yourself. You, you can master yourself, you can master anything that you put your mind to. I've definitely realized my focus to do certain things has increased for that. Exponentially? Exponentially? Exponentially, yeah. <laughs> Exponentially. <laughs> because like, I can do this meditation for, I can do, I do it almost every day for 10 minutes now. 10 minutes in the morning, just focus for 10 minutes and like, be present in my moment, be present in my surrounding. Another great book is The Power of Now by 
Wow by Tolly. That's another phenomenal book. It just gives you that clarity. It just gives you that ability to focus on one thing and do that to its entirety. That's why I can study a lot better now to its entirety. That's why I can, I can focus on my, go, going to the gym without checking social media. And whenever, it just like, you, just, we, you may not be able to, uh, to recognize it with me now, but I promise you will once you actually do it. So you can either meditate on your own or you can use uh, a guided meditation. So what I usually use, I used to, I couldn't even, if you, so you have, if you have no basis for meditation whatsoever, I definitely recommend using a, a guided meditation app. The one I currently use is Bright Mind. Uh, you can either, uh, it's, it's, it's a free version and also a paid version. Free is always good, right? So there's a free version there. But like, if you really want to go deeper into it, then there's the paid version. And it's like, always, always like, if, you, if paying, going to college is coming out of your own pocket, it makes you want to actually attend class as opposed to using student loans, which is not your money, to pay for college. If, if paying for college or going to college is coming out of your own dime, you're working for it, and you, it's going to that, you'll be a lot less inclined to skip class or skip assignments or whatever. So just like that, whenever you do pay for stuff, it makes you more inclined, okay, I paid for it. Let me get let me get as much value and worth out of it that I possibly can because I paid for it out of my own pocket, out of my own money. So yeah, I'll leave the link to the Bright Mind app in the description down below if you wanna check that out. And just test it out the free version first. So again, meditation allows you to consciously tap into yourself every single day and just get to know who you are pretty much and not being swayed by social media, being swayed and carried to and fro by people's opinions about you. I definitely feel I'm a lot happier. I'm a lot more patient with people <laughs> and don't have like that uh, quick, quick, quick instant gratification type of mindset in my day-to-day -day life. I can. I can chill if the bus, if the traffic is there, I can chill. If the cashier is taking a lot longer, I can chill. Like, I'm not rushing people or in that instant gratification type of mindset. And again, mental clarity is definitely there as well. But yeah, man, so I hope that was, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Uh, that it was a lot of information as to why, how it changed my life. Definitely check out the next video that I made about how to meditate for beginners at home in the comfort of your own home. Check that out and Hope you watch that in the next little series playlist. God bless, much love, peace, and joy. Namaste, namaste. And if it doesn't feed you, don't water it. It is what it be. Bye.